Okay, so uh, this is going to be my first attempt at uh, any video making like this, and uh, I'm pretty much going to go over what my everyday carry is for uh, equipped to indoor. And basically, what I have here is uh, just the absolute minimum of everything that I carry on my person. Uh, I've got my wallet, I have my uh, Phoenix PD20 flashlight, I have a uh, just a Schrade folder. I get knives for free every year from family for uh, for Christmas, so just hang on to those. I run a very minimal amount of keys just for my house and car, and uh, I do have one of these little thumb LED lights that actually works really well um, when you're in a low light situation. And my Springfield Armory XD 40 caliber, um, and that is pretty much it. I do have one other little tool that I carry inside of my wallet. I got this on eBay and actually was very surprised at the quality for 97 cents. And this is a, uh, I can't remember how many tools it actually has on this thing, but I, uh, adjust my grip here. This little thing has something like 17 tools on it or something like that. And uh, it's stainless steel and it's actually very, very strong. Um, it's almost brand, this one's almost brand new, I actually have two, and the other one I've pried with, I've opened cans with, I've, I've done just about everything that it actually has, other than the saw, um, even though it's pretty sharp, it's not something that I would uh, actually, you know, use unless I absolutely had to, but I have tried most of it out and it does work pretty well. Um, like I said, I got this thing for like 97 cents on eBay and you can't pass that up, especially considering it's the size of a, uh, a credit card or ID. So overall, it's um, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, that's what I carry on my person. Very simple, like I said. Um, now, basically, what I'm going to move on to is what I actually carry in my get home bag. This is going to be something separate, but since this is a bag that I keep with me every day, all the time, in my car, it is uh, it's part of what I consider to be my everyday carry. And that's pretty much how I run it set up when I'm actually running the bag. Uh, I have my pistol in here as well. Um, this is a uh, Maxpedition Sitka Gear Slinger. And I got it in black because, you know, it's, it's fairly discreet. Um, I carry this thing, you know, to and from my car so many times. Um, you know, you might say that it has that little bit of a mall ninja look, but I don't really care. I picked out black. It was actually the cheapest of the colors that I found online, but I'll go ahead and start with what I have on it. Um, I always keep a, um, a spare uh, pair of glasses, and these are actually ESS Ice. Uh, I got these on eBay. They were very lightly used for like 20 bucks. Uh, it came with everything here, an extra lens, uh, the tinted lens, the uh, little uh, case and all that stuff. They're not that great. I mean... They're definitely not bad by any means, but I'll take those over some cheap sunglasses. Um, on the exterior, I run, I normally run one or two Grimlocks. I have this one here. They're cheap. You know, can buy those online. Um, I've got my, uh, I actually got this Scorpion from BowTacTactical.com. Um, it's one of the tactical pens that you can use as a window punch, and it also has a, a pin that you unscrew. You just basically unscrew it, flip it around, and you have a pen. So I've got that. So that's one writing utensil. Uh, I basically live by the threes. I'm sure pretty much everyone else does too. Um, minimum of three of everything. But here I have my Nalgene, and uh, I've got my uh, my pre-filter for my SteriPen. Actually, I keep it on there unless I'm going to be using this a lot or I'm using it at home, and then I'll just take that off. Um, one thing I did actually forget, it's uh, full of water and frozen in my freezer right now, is my uh, uh, platypus. I keep a uh, half liter platypus usually rolled up in here as well. Um, I've got Carmex. See, I don't like to use the uh, um, chapstick, so I use Carmex instead. Also, it's something that, um, you know... I could actually use this for, uh, you know, storing anything once I'm actually done using it. So once I run out of this Carmex, I'll probably keep it and use it for uh, some type of tender or, you know, something of that sort. Here's my fire making kit. 
Uh, this is actually pretty redundant. I keep one of these in just about every bag that I own. It's um, a bunch of lint, a bunch of cotton. Uh, I keep it, you know, fairly well compressed. I actually have regular matches, stormproof matches, uh, just an ordinary striker, uh, magnesium striker. Um, in here, I actually have um, those are uh, they look like contact holders, and that's what they are. But I got those for like 50 cents total, and inside of those are cotton balls with uh, petroleum jelly. So a little bit of fire starter and tinder there. Got some uh, ordinary hand sanitizer, some earplugs because this bag goes with me everywhere, and I usually try to keep a, a set of earplugs. You know, if I'm going to be at the range, um, I always have paracord for cordage in every bag. That's about 20 feet. Dental floss, another type of cordage. Uh, you know, also you use it to floss your teeth. That's pretty simple. That's it for that pack or uh, pocket. Which actually. I'll go ahead and show you the pockets too. I'm not really doing a review of this bag. This one's fairly flat, uh, low profile. Um, you can get to it from just this one here, and it actually has this button uh, that you can hold it close with as well. Um, not a big fan of the, the design of that pocket, but it works for what I use it for. Uh, here we have standard like shock cord. Then you have a uh, pouch here that you can run a flashlight through or any kind of a tool. Um, I actually have a... Uh, uh, if I'm actually going to be using this in the field, if I'm going to be doing anything, you know, actually like camping wise, I'll take my uh, my camp axe and just slide it straight through, and it sticks through a few inches on either side. But this is pretty much just like a a general purpose pouch for me. I keep my uh, streamlight headlamp in there. I have uh, several of these. This is just a USGI compass. It's actually in the uh, the issue Alice pouch because I, I really don't care that much. This thing works. It's not a fancy compass, but it does everything you need it to do, which is fine with me for about, I think I got a surplus for about $8. Um, I keep um, a pair of tweezers for uh, tick removal. I actually want to get some, uh, some better ones, but that'll be something in the future. And you can see how I have this set up. This is a um, I got this for Christmas, I think, two years ago, and this thing works phenomenally. This is uh, 1,700 milliamp, uh, basically just a battery backup, and it has a little LED flashlight in it as well. And you actually charge it by plugging into a, a wall socket. But anything that's USB, it can actually charge two at once, and this will give me about two-thirds of a charge on my cell phone. And uh, actually, the cell phone I had before, it would have done a full charge, but that thing's great. I keep it with me everywhere. This is just a simple Leatherman. I've actually had this thing for probably about 10 years. Um, it's seen a ton of use. And these things, my mom actually found at Menards for really cheap. I think these were like a dollar for both. And basically what it is, is it's like a pin, but on the inside, it actually has uh, all of the little, uh, you know, this one's all Phillips and flathead, and this one is all hex, you know, of different size. So. Uh, even though the thing is cheap as hell, and it actually, it's magnetic tip, which isn't all that great, but for the size, it's actually really good, and uh, they're not real bad. They're, um, you know, some of these that are actually pretty sharp, you could use these to to cut or shave something very small with if you needed to, you know, do a little bit of fine detail work. Get those out of the way. Of course, I keep... Um, this is one of my two Sharpies. My other Sharpie actually broke uh, the last time I had it at the range, but I keep a red and a black. And here, I think this is about uh, 20 feet or so of uh, uh, just regular duct tape. Uh, I've found that the, um, the fiber tapes like Gorilla Tape are a lot harder to actually um, get off of themselves, you know, when you just have it bundled up like this. So I just keep the, the gray duct tape. And that pouch, as you can see, has uh, the uh, bungees there. And it has this backed pocket right here. Uh, don't really use it for much other than just those small things there. And I'll actually get into the meat of the get home bag. And basically this bag for me is, you know, most of my traveling is done within about 40 miles of home. So this for me, while it probably could last as a 72 hour pack just by uh, sustainability, um, I don't really necessarily prepare it that way. Uh, for food stores in this pack, I usually keep uh, one Cliff Bar. And it's actually kind of funny because uh, 
Adam with Equip to Endure, he says the uh, absolute perfect thing about uh, Cliff Bars is uh, while they are a great little snack, they are usually dry enough that they make you want to not eat anything else. Um, I actually have a power bar that I keep in there. These things aren't that bad. They're really dry too. Um, sometimes I actually make my own protein bars at home. I have a really good recipe and uh, those are pretty much the exact same thing that I make at home. And mine are a little bit better because I can put extra honey in them and they're great tasting. I keep uh, usually keep a couple of these small granola bars just for something to munch on. And then this, actually, uh, I just got this recently. Um, I, th I got three of these to test them out. It's a little bit dirty, actually. Um, not sure if you can see it for the glare. Uh, these are ER bars, 3,600 calories. Uh, it's a three-day food supply, and actually, I got this on Amazon. And uh, if you can see the actual date of manufacture and expiration date, I just bought it probably two weeks ago, uh, mid-May, and it came... It was actually made in April of this year, so it's good until April of 2017. Um, so five years, that's awesome. Um, this thing, I'm not going to go into this too in-depth. If you want to look it up, you can find it on Amazon pretty easily. They only cost about $5 a piece. Um, there are nine squares. I'm sure you can, you can kind of see the indentations. And they're fairly easy to break apart if you hit them with a stick. And yes, you would have to hit them with a stick or break them over something like uh, your knee or maybe your shin bone because <laughs> this thing is really tough. It weighs about two pounds and uh, you have a seal which doesn't really work all that well once you open it but this is some sort of like a mylar packaging and uh, they're actually pretty good. Um, I've had about seven people test this out so far uh, of the first one that I actually opened. I, I ordered three because it was cheaper for shipping to do that and uh, what my plans are is you know to have one of these in every one of my packs just in case because that is 72 hours worth of food even though it's a two pound brick and it doesn't taste all that great but it really it's dry but the taste is um, is just subtle enough it's like a lemony flavor kind of like a lemon wheat flavor and um, you know I I think I could sustain off of it for uh, three days if I absolutely had to wouldn't be great but hey for the size and for the price, you really can't beat this thing. I've tried Mainstays, SOS, um, you know, a bunch of the different brands like that. I've eaten MREs, you know, like actual issue MREs, civilian MREs. And really, honestly, if I want something for flavor, I'm going to eat some of this stuff. But this is just going to be to sustain and, uh, you know, just use for fuel for my body. So that's good enough for me. Uh, here I have another writing utensil because my actual uh, little memo book, um, the pencil that I had for it broke, so I just have a, a pen here. And basically this thing I use, um, I use all the time already. Um, this is like my little range book. You know, I make notes in it, and it would be something that I could write with or just do whatever. Also in here I actually keep, uh, it's got these, a couple of these little lanyards inside, which I'm sure a lot of people use for keys, but this one I actually keep for my, uh, for my emergency whistle. And actually, I was a, um, a football coach, and uh, basically kids football. And this was my coach whistle. And since I haven't used it since I stopped coaching, I figured I would just throw it in my bag. And uh, this is my emergency whistle, as I said. But I uh, jokingly call this my rape whistle, just in case anyone tried to violate me out in public. Um, let's see here. That's pretty much it. Inside, there are um, two dividers. They're only partial. I can't say that I really like that. Um, the open pouch is pretty good. Um, originally, I had intended on using this as a uh, um, like my med kit pouch, but it ends up it works a little bit better for food for me. I have quick uh, quick access because this pack I actually uh, with the single uh, single strap gear slinger design, I can switch it around to my fr the front of my body and get right into this pouch and this pouch, you know, just as easily as I can the main pouch. Um, it's not holding its integrity right now, structural integrity. Um, oh yeah, this thing is on the outside as well. Don't really do anything with it. Um, you got a couple D rings that you can do stuff with. A handle here. Um, the uh, cinch down strap is actually really good. I like that. But on to inside. This is the initial part of my shelter. This is uh, Adventure Medicals SOL Emergency Bivy. I actually haven't gotten to use this yet, but I've seen some good reviews. Um, I've always kept Mylar blankets, but 
this thing was about 12 or $13 on Amazon, and number one, it's already sealed up. You can use it as a uh, like a sleeping bag, so that's going to be great. It's a small size, and it has the, uh, the Mylar blanket already set up inside, which would give uh, a little better you know, return of body heat than just using an emergency blanket to kind of drape or, or use in whatever way you were trying to. Um, as I said, I keep my pistol in here. I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way. I do keep um, two spare magazines in here as well. So let's go ahead and get those out of the way. This is my med kit. I'll get to it. Actually, it's med kit and hygiene. I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, this is something else that I use. I do these little uh, self-made lanyard systems in uh, just about every pouch and every pack that I have. Um, it's an extra probably three feet of cordage and also got you know another LED light on that. So this is the kind of thing where it's actually attached inside of the pack. If you can see that. And basically I can attach to anything, just a little hook and loop design there. And now I have light. It's not a whole lot of light, but it's enough that it works. Get to water here in just a second. I do keep a pair of gloves. These are actually um, Under Armour summer gloves, I believe. And these things are actually really good. They're starting to get quite beaten up. Uh, the fingers are actually holding their integrity pretty well. I do have some fraying. Uh, I've used these in probably, let me think, uh, two or three shooting courses that I've gone through. And probably, I don't know, I would say four or five hundred hours of training time. And I purposefully uh, load magazines whenever I'm making trips to the range with these gloves. Because whether I'm doing 40 cal, uh, 223, or 308, uh, I just wanted to put them through as much abuse as possible. That way, if anyone were looking for any type of gloves, I could give a solid recommendation. And it wouldn't just be something that, you know, once in a while use was actually going to be what I based my opinion off of. And I try to do that as much as I can. Um, actually in here you have, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go over this pack too much, but you have Velcro inside. Uh, I don't use that for a holster. My pistol actually stays in there really well. Uh, I am going to make a Kydex insert that I'm going to mount in here myself. I do make my own Kydex holsters. Um, has a couple of these little zipper mesh pockets. Um, I am pretty impressed, I'll say, with uh, with the quality of the mesh material that Maxpedition uses, it's much heavier than uh, most other companies that I've seen. Like, uh, I have a Kelty Peregrine backpack, and it has some mesh inside of it, and it's terrible. Um, I keep some tea in here, just some ordinary Lipton green tea. Uh, you can see it there. I keep about three or four packs, because that's, that's the kind of thing that, you know, boil up some water that's maybe not going to taste that great. Uh, can add some of this to it along with maybe some uh, some pine needles and you've got a, a pretty good morning tea. I'm not a coffee person, so tea works fine for me. Plus I've got the little Ziploc bag. You can use that for storing something, whatever. Maybe put bait in if you uh, catch some fish and keep the intestines or entrails. And I believe that's pretty much it for pouches in there. But if you wanna check that pack out, I'm sure there are probably a hundred different reviews on uh, on YouTube. Um, I am a an adamant adamant person about people having something for self hygiene in their pack and uh, these are just Huggies uh, baby wipes. You can buy these very very cheap at the store and just about anywhere whether it be um, dollar stores, Walmart, you know whatever you have near you and uh, the things are great. Number one they are antibacterial. Um, of course they're made to wipe baby's butts which you know of course has shit on it so it's going to be able to uh, to deal with just about anything that you're going to be able to put it through using them on your body uh, I fill this thing up and I constantly use these whether it be um, if I just need to take like a quick field bath use those to, to wipe whatever I need to and clean whatever I need to and believe it or not uh, you know other than an actual shower these probably clean me up better in the field than anything that I've used so I'm absolute firm believer in those especially you know people try to to take toilet paper with them and put toilet paper in different bags and you know I've seen people do the um, the compression of toilet paper or you know they buy the the square toilet paper and things like that and they actually uh, you know put those in their pack but 
those are much better. Number one, they leave you feeling cleaner. They smell good. Uh, you know, you're not going to have dingleberries like normal toilet paper. And uh, other than that, you can use them to, you know, to an extent to clean up your body as well, whether it be your, your armpits, you know, your crotch, whatever it may be. And uh, we all know how much that helps. Uh, now on to water. Uh, actually, I am missing two items from this bag that I normally have uh, because I, um, I gave them both away. I have a, um, I normally have water treatment pills or purification tablets, whatever you want to call them. And I also keep a, um, a glass, an amber glass eyedropper bottle of um, chlorine bleach that I do rotate out. And, uh, you know, those are two methods for uh, sterilizing water. Now, this is actually something new. Um, I've been looked at, looking at getting one of the, uh, the Frontier filters before. And, um, you know, while it is small, I was actually kind of worried about, you know, the amount of gallons that it would get. So if it were something that I needed to use for, you know, a prolonged period at all, if it were the only thing I had, um, I would rather have a life straw. I actually got this for about 25 bucks, and I can't recall off of the top of my head how many gallons of water this will get, but it's ridiculously more than uh, a Frontier. And if you look at the price, 25 bucks versus, you know, like 10 or 12, this thing is going to last a lot longer. And I'm I'm thinking it was something like, 100 gallons of water, or maybe it was 150 liters. I, I may be confusing that. But here's the rest of my, uh, this is my SteriPen Classic. Um, this goes with my Nalgene, of course, that you saw earlier. This is the actual, uh, the filter that you put into the Nalgene here. Let's see uh, if I can do this with no hands. Oh, by the way, I'm actually using a Boulder Contour HD 1080p. Um, this is pretty much like a helmet cam or a, a gun mounted cam and uh, I'm just making it work because I actually don't own a good camera but you put this filter in here you secure that in the way it's supposed to go and then what you do is you can either submerge this or you can pour water in and it actually this acts as a pre-filter for the water that's actually going into your Nalgene and then what you do is once that's actually out you take your SteriPen you activate well, of course you're going to Pop this off. Drop the camera. Uh, basically, you take your stereo pin, you insert it in here, you uh, flip the entire apparatus over, and it has two settings uh, one for half liter, which you press twice, you press once for one liter, and in 90 seconds, I think it is, um, it will actually, yeah, I think it's 48 seconds for half liter and 90 seconds for a liter. And this is one liter, of course, and it will purify using uh, ultraviolet. That thing's great. I wasn't completely, uh, uh, completely sold on them. Um, I've had a couple of friends who've, who've raved about them for a while, and uh, I decided to, uh, to pick one up a while back, and uh, it's really good. But those are my uh, only two methods of water uh, purification that I have in this get-home bag right now. That should be good enough, though. I mean, I have something quick. I could walk up and drink out of a mud puddle if I needed to or, you know, uh, any any water that was, well, I wouldn't do a mud puddle unless I absolutely had to. Let's just say that. But um, And the reason is, if it were on a street especially, um, oil, gasoline, diesel, all the byproducts from cars, um, you know, unnatural materials is what you're definitely going to run into. Those are the kind of chemicals that I wouldn't want to deal with uh, in my drinking water without some serious water treatment. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. I would rather use you know, some sort of fresh water. But in my area, I live in Indiana, and we have some of the most polluted rivers in the Midwest, uh, streams as well. So it's actually uh, it's pretty crazy to think about. Um, let's see here. This, actually, like I said, this was part of a, um, this was actually an entire 300-piece medical kit that I got at a, um, a local grocery store chain. If you guys have Meyer. It's like a superstore like Walmart um, with a lot higher quality normally than Walmart. But I actually got this. They put these on clearance. Or clearance. Um, they were, um, I think they were about $30 initially. And they were on sale. Actually, they were like 60% off. And then they were marked down 50% off of that for clearance. So I got this thing for like $5.85. And I stripped it down because it had like 200 uh like 200 band-aids in it and for my like a 72-hour qu uh, kit 
or hell, even a 24-hour kit. That's just way too many Band-Aids. So pretty much, I, uh, I stripped it down. I took all the stuff that I didn't need or didn't want out of it, and I replaced it with things that I thought I would need or want. Um, now what I've done with this kit is actually, um, I've gone a little more on this, the side of sustainability with this. Um, this here, I actually, uh, I don't have a full yet, but I have an entire round of antihistamines in case of an allergic reaction. I have uh, 40 tablets of ibuprofen, 200 milligrams, um, and I have about 60 tablets of uh, uh, naproxen sodium, 220 milligrams. So I've got, you know, I can deal with, um, with fever, swelling, any type of, well, not any type, but, you know, several types of allergic reactions that I could have. Um, don't have any allergies, but just in case. Uh, I keep, um, you know, a couple different kinds of uh, toothpaste, you know, just little cheap things, toothbrush. I actually, I thought about getting one of the little um, travel toothbrush things. It's like half the size, but they're normally larger in diameter. So just keeping uh, the regular toothbrush like that, it's a little bit better for me. I have uh, these little mouthwash packets. You can usually see these like hotels or things like that. And actually my sister got these for me. And uh, those are great. I've got six of them in there. So that's six times I can, I can uh, wash my mouth. And now this isn't something that I would normally keep, but I got these from my sister as well, because she does work at a hotel, and I thought this would be great. You know, actually, um, I have these in, in my get-home bag as well as my bug-out bag, and I take them with me camping, hiking, or doing whatever. But this is uh, shampoo and conditioner, and it's actually three packs. And what I've found is because I, I normally have short hair, this could work for two people. Uh, so... You know, if I had someone else with me, could wash and uh, condition hair twice with that. And actually, what I'm going to do here is make a little bit of space so I can keep this stuff separated out. Um, but yeah, here I went through and I picked the uh, the band-aids that I thought would be uh, most pertinent for what I would need. Uh, thumb and finger band-aids, um, some patch style band-aids, some big band-aids, you know, just to cover up... Uh, you know, simple, uh, simple wounds. I don't keep a suture kit. Um, I do keep, uh, uh, where are they at? Let's see here. I keep steri strips in everything that I have. And, uh, I have had some accidents before. I have used steri strips on myself. Um, I've had enough stitches to know, uh, how everything works and I'm pretty sure I can do it myself. But, uh, I don't see myself doing it in the field. Not only that, but if I'm 40 miles away and I have something that could be stitched, it could be probably be steri stripped and be just fine. And uh, I keep two packs in there, and those are nine a piece. I have some uh, some dressing pads and gauze. That's pretty much it for this side. I've got a second pair of tweezers. These are the ones that came in the med kit. They're not very good. They're plastic. It actually came with these little shears. They're actually pretty decent. I was fairly surprised. Also, this kind of uh, backs up all the little uh, little pills that I had in my thing. It has uh, non-aspirin pain reliever, aspirin, um, you know, several packs of each. It has ibuprofen in there as well. So, pain reliever, fever reducer. You'd really be surprised how much that stuff hurts. You know, you have a simple toothache or, you know, you do get injured and need to uh, relieve pain somehow, then every little bit helps. Um, you know, whether or not that's something you normally use. Like I said, there are my steri strips. This thing came with some very useful stuff as far as first aid goes, in my opinion, other than the million and a half band-aids. It's got a few packs of burn cream. Actually, this is... Uh, I used to work a job where I was regularly being burned and uh, this stuff is phenomenal. I normally buy this in the uh, the bottles, which is about $25 for a bottle of it. So it came with uh, two small ones and a larger one. Um, these are actually uh, antibiotic ointment. It's got six of those. Oh, looks like I'm missing one or have used it. That's a possibility. So I got five antibiotic ointments. It's got a bunch of alcohol cleaning pads. 
It's got sting relief pads, which actually I have a redundancy for that I added myself. Uh, sting Ease, this stuff is good for uh, insect bites. It's just an external analgesic. Um, I'm out, I hike a lot, I do a lot of different things um, that will kind of put me in harm's way of, of little critters biting me. Uh, this is another survival blanket. This one actually is uh, very big for, uh, it must be really thin in millimeters, I'm not sure. But it's 84 inches by 52 inches. This actually came in the survival kit. So that's, that's pretty substantial for, um, you know, just really cheap ones. A couple rolls of gauze. You know, just simple, simple stuff there. Oh, yeah, and it comes with uh, Q-tips as well. So I have something, you know, you could use for uh, either swabbing a wound or uh, tender fire starter right there. Multi-purpose, multi-roll. Uh, a couple of tongue depressors. That's actually something that you could use other than for a tongue depressor. This could be used as a, a splint for a small bone break, like a finger, um, as well as tender for starting a fire. It actually came with some uh, latex-free gloves. I'm not sure if they're nitrile, but it doesn't actually say, but I'll keep them. They work. They were free. It has a one-time use thermometer, and actually uh, it's made by Nextemp, so it's a fairly decent brand. Uh, it's latex-free as well. I'm, I don't have any latex allergies, but if I needed to use any of this stuff on someone else, you know, you never know. Um, it actually comes with a, uh, a cold pack, which is ac actually, it's about, uh, I would say this weighs about six ounces. So as long as it would actually, uh, you know, work the way that it's supposed to work, that's pretty substantial. I, I couldn't see it being good enough for like a broken ankle or a broken leg, but it would be enough if you had a nice bump on your head or, you know, something of that sort. Let's go ahead and pull the rest of this stuff out. I actually left the uh, emergency guide because the tape stuck that came with it stuck to it really well. And not only th that, but, you know, this has some different things in it where, uh, like I do have uh, first aid and CPR training uh, that I've done in the past. And, you know, if, if someone else had to use this medical kit that didn't have training, at least I had something if I weren't able to tell them what to do. Um, it's got uh, six of these... Um, uh, moist towelettes, and actually I'd never really looked at these before, I just kind of kept them in there. Uh, benzalkonium chloride, basically just a simple antiseptic that it has in there. Well, actually, it's got three of them. And that is pretty much it. Um, you know, that's a pretty decent little... Uh, you know, medical kit. It's I wouldn't say it's on the the order of being an actual trauma kit or IFAC by any means. Um, if my intentions were to uh, to make it more IFAC oriented, I would definitely add you know something like an Israeli bandage, uh, maybe either Celox or uh, you know something of that sort, hemostatic. Uh, the one thing I don't have in here that I will add um, as soon as I get done is a uh, a tourniquet and an Israeli bandage. I'll probably put both of those in there. Uh, really simple to fit, um, you know, $5 for an Israeli bandage, something that could save your life is uh, is definitely something you shouldn't go without in any pack that you actually have you deal with. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot these. This thing came with uh, several patches of moleskins. I've actually taken some of them out, but really when you look at it, what I paid for this medical kit, the, uh, the moleskins alone almost paid for the entire thing, and then you factor in uh, all the other stuff, and it was actually phenomenal deal couldn't pass it up plus it's a it's a pretty sturdy little piece of kit uh, I was actually really surprised at the stitching it's uh, it's even though it's only a single stitch it's actually uh, it's pretty good for what it is um, well that I believe is pretty much it I've got food I've got fire I've got water I've got simple shelter in my uh, bivy um, I am gonna add a tarp as well I'm still uh, trying to whittle down my tarp size to the smallest that I can actually have it, you know, running uh, pretty ultra light in that aspect. Because, um, you know, where I live, there are a lot of trees, even though there are a lot of cornfields, there's usually no problem making some sort of lean to or uh, a debris shelter, debris hut. Um, you know, I have a couple simple tools that I can, I can make, cut, or break with. Um, I have cordage. I have fire, I have water. I'd say I'm pretty well set. 
there are a few odds and ends here and there, but uh, overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with where this kid is right now. Um, I think that thing weighs a total of maybe uh, with water, I don't know, I would guess 12 pounds to 15 pounds, and uh, you know that's mostly uh, pistol ammunition and water because I do always try to keep um, a full one liter Nalgene with me, uh, even if I don't have it, I can very simply get water with what I do have. Um, but that is pretty much it, and. Uh, Thank you for watching.